welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we're gonna to talk about a health topic. Um, all of us in Hampton Roads have a higher risk than the national um, averages, and it's colon cancer. It's not a pretty subject, it's not a fun subject, but it is very, very important that we all raise our awareness. And here to help us with that is Lulu Rick Santi and Alan Thornton. And you are a cancer researcher, yes. mostly with genetic markers, and a radiation oncologist. So we've got, we've got risk factors and prevention, and we've got treatment. Yes. Why? Why is colon cancer more prevalent here? So this summer, I was really, really surprised with the report that uh, the Hampton Roads, uh, and more specifically the southeastern area oh, yeah. of Virginia and the northeastern area of North Carolina was actually found to be a hot spot for colon cancer mortality, along with Appalachia and the Mississippi Delta. So the risk factors for colon cancer include age, being African American. Okay, let's slow down. So age, yeah, age. Our, our risk increases as we get older. Yes. Okay. Uh, being African American for some reason. In and of itself, genetically, not not economic factors. It could, it could be all of those it's things. It's hard to tell, yeah. It's hard to tell. And then there are some genetic disorders that can predispose you, and so family history is also a risk factor. So why this area is a hot spot for colon cancer mortality could be because there's just a, a large concentration of older people and a large concentration of African Americans. And diet, you said, plays a part too. In the South, and you saw Mississippi Delta, you, I mean, the, we don't always have the healthiest traditions yes. when it comes to eating. Yes, and so those are some of the risk factors that are associated with colon cancer mortality. So I think it's worth examining here in this area what the role of the diet is in, in colon cancer mortality. And lifestyle? Lifestyle, sedentary lifestyle. So not being active. Um, it's, it, you know, that's a, a risk factor for other diseases. I was you know, gonna diseases say, other you know, than all colon of cancer. us could reduce our risk factors for almost everything mm -hmm. by getting up and walking yes, a couple of times a day or even once a day, you know, wherever, whatever your starting place is, you know, change it up just a little bit, just absolutely. a little bit at a time. Okay, colon cancer is a harder one to talk about. Like, all cancers are scary, I think. You know, it's just this scary word. Yes. But but colon cancer is messier. It's the screening isn't, you know, it's not as easy. But screening saves lives, right? And the thing about colon cancer is that there's not just one screening modality, there's several. There's the fecal occult blood test where you can just use a little brush and send the samples into a lab. There's a sigmoidoscopy, there's colonoscopy. Okay, what, what's a sigmoid? Oh, that's um, another scope, but Another type different. of scope, but it doesn't go, um, it's not as long as the colonoscopy. Um, and probably Dr. Thornton can talk a little bit more about these so, modalities. So these are investigative um, procedures using uh, optical scopes that are introduced into the uh, GI canal, uh, and, and you can either introduce them right into the rectum and just look at the uh, anus and uh, rectum, that would be a proctoscope, proctoscopic exam, or you can go up farther into the sigmoid colon, or you can actually scope the entire colon, and that, uh, that obviously is, is called a proper colonoscopy. So those are very important tests for, for anyone to have, especially if they have a family history. My own mother had colorectal cancer. Uh, that is a very important uh, thing for folks to have. Geez, and you have a family history too. I do, and so I was very young when I had my first colonoscopy. I, I um, revealed my family history to my physician and she quickly said, we need to do a colonoscopy. And um, what people may not know is for those that have a family history, you should usually start screening up to 10 years before the first case in your family. So the same goes for breast cancer, prostate cancer. So if there was a breast cancer, in your family at 40, you usually start at 30 years old. The recommendation is to start usually 10 years before the first case in the family. It's one of those things people put off, the, the screening. But it's also, I mean, as you told me right before the show, it's one of the factors that increases your risk of mortality from the disease. It, it's part of the reason so many people are dying from colorectal cancers is because they wait too long and it gets caught too late, right? So it's important that folks realize the, the signs and symptoms of colon cancer. That's, that's the, of paramount importance. You know, people don't talk about that. We talk about 
breast cancer and self-detection and you know skin cancer and when your moles change what what do we look for so really any change in your bowel habits be it a uh, increased or decreased uh, either uh, one okay. passage of uh, stool is important change in caliber of stool whether your stool changes in size becomes smaller reproducibly over a, over a period of time mm -hmm. uh, any change in color particularly with uh, uh, bright red blood is important for the uh, for the uh, bowel tract. So, presence of blood is important, and uh, and uh, what Lula was saying was the uh, with any uh, there's a test for blood in the stool that should be done, and I would advocate that you should do that once a year yourself. Uh, that's such an easy test; it's essentially free. You can obtain the packets at your drugstore for that, and uh, test that yourself. Really? Uh, absolutely. And uh, it's clueless. Such an I had easy never thing. heard yep, that. Yep. Fecal occult blood test. I, and I have had it done actually at the doctor, but mm -hmm. I didn't know or you could just go out and do it. Or a test. That's the mm -hmm. other proper name for it. Okay. But uh, those are important uh, things to do. Um, any cramping, uh, abdominal cramping that's new or different outside of your routine. I mean, these are things that folks uh, need, need to be attentive to and point out to your doctor uh, about. So really any change in your routine is what we're, we're looking for. Obviously any weight loss or any uh, decrease in appetite, but that usually involves more advanced disease and we, we want to catch it before sooner, that point of uh, time. Than that. Absolutely. So you, you started your screening early because you told your doctor, listen, this runs in my family. How old were you? I was 30. Golly gee. <laughs> Wow. I was 30 years old when I had my colonoscopy, and I've been, been a big advocate and proponent for that. And um, my best friend was 35 when she was diagnosed with stage 2 colorectal cancer. And um, I remember when she called me with the news, and I didn't really know what to tell her because, unfortunately, she did not have a family history. So you don't know, right? So we didn't know where this came from, and so I work really closely with her and uh, the Ferguson Foundation. That's her foundation with um, um, just providing awareness and developing tools to uh, help people understand the importance of, of screening and, and knowing your status. So, looking for the signs, talking to your doctor about when to start screening, then actually doing it. I mean, you know, Katie Couric went on live TV and did it. It's not the end of the world. It is not the most fun way you'll spend, you know, 18 hours, but it's not the worst either. Yes. And so one of the things that I should mention is that the recommended age for screening currently is 50 years old. So if you're an average risk individual, have no family history, you should have a conversation around 50 years old with your doctor, and they, that's the recommended age for, for screening. And you know, that's like a double whammy. You're like, you turn 50, you're not that darn happy about it anyway. <laughs> it's like, oh gosh, I'm getting old. And then you have to go have, you know, boom. But it's not, you know, that but bad. But 90% 90, 90 right? of the cases, though, occur after the age of 50. So, right. So your risk mm -hmm. really goes up at really that point. Really goes up. And not just for colon cancer, but many other cancers. Yeah. And as you mentioned, the colonoscopy itself can be, you know, it, it's not just your, it, yes, you have it, no, you don't. There's pre-cancers, there's polyps, there's other things that the, um, the, your professional can take care of at that time that helps to further reduce your risk or spot risk and say come back more frequently. Right? Absolutely. So, so when they do a colonoscopy, they're, they're looking for any changes obviously in the colon, but if you have multiple polyps, if you have uh, signs of pre-malignant changes, uh, obviously they'll attend to removing the polyps, doing the biopsies, hopefully those are negative, but it tells you that your dietary habits might be in order and to be changed a little bit. Maybe you need more roughage in your diet. Uh, Maybe you need to have less fat in your diet. Uh, these are important things to know. So, so dietary-wise, I'm, I'm going to guess you're going to say the exact same things that everybody else says yes. about health in general. But for for people at risk of colon cancer, what what kinds of dietary changes do we make? What's what's the preferred diet? So I think uh, one must increase their fiber intake. And that uh, is a little different. Vegetables. You don't necessarily think about that. Okay, so more fiber. More fiber. So cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli, cauliflower, things that are you know that kale, you that you think that, yeah. that are very mm -hmm. fibrous, and reduce your fat intake. 
And again, that's and that's whole the grains, same. Whole grains add a lot whole of Whole grains, too. exactly. And that's the same for any other chronic yeah, disease, kind of for is. cardiovascular you, disease. You reduce the fat and yes. you increase vegetables. Uh, no matter what diet there is out there, yeah. it, it also, almost always involves increasing your vegetables. Your vegetable intake. We're, we're not so good at that as Americans. Yeah. Okay, so if we've made it this far and if I have cancer in colorectal, colon cancer, what are some, what are the treatment options? Well, the first thing is to diagnose it, and then uh, once it's diagnosed, we want to investigate it. We want to know if it has spread outside the colon. So the whole issue is whether it's uh, permeated and the, the degree in which it has uh, uh, permeated through the thickness of the colon itself. That's the big issue. And you don't know that until you've had surgery. So, so they, they can't tell that until they... They really can't. Mm. So they want to take out that section of the colon and they want to look at the tissue in cross-section to see the depth of invasion through the colon wall and they want to look at associated lymph nodes that drain that area. Lymph nodes are like the oil filters in the body, they drain tissue fluids. So we want to look at thickness and we want to look at lymph nodes. That's, that's really the crucial elements to treating early stage colon cancer. Okay. If it gets past that, what happens? Well, in the process of doing this workup, we also look at the liver. Uh, because the liver is the primary draining uh, facility for the, the taking the metabolites, so the food, food uh, materials that have been absorbed from the colon. So we want to check the liver to see if the tumor has spread to the liver. Has it spread there and elsewhere in the body? Um, so we do what we would consider a proper workup for that. Sometimes the tumor is able to be removed. There's no spread to the liver, uh, which is great. Um, but there might be some tumor left behind in the immediate area around the colon. Mm -hmm. And that's when radiation therapy is used and a combination uh, of chemotherapy is used as well to kill cells that we do not know are elsewhere in the body. Right. So, so. so surgery, I mean, surgery is never fun, but you've got way more colon than you need, right? Like right. how long is the colon? Oh, I forget the actual length. I think it's 20 feet. And, yeah, and yeah. Something on this. So order. some of that can go, and that's I you know not. Yep. It's not like you're you're taking off something that you don't have more of. So mm -hmm. so that frequently can work. I mean, granted, you could lose too much and right. need a cost. I mean, there's bad things that can happen. But then, so you're looking at the residual right. tumors or potential tumors, and that's where radiation, proton therapy. Um, so, so we almost always give chemotherapy with these tumors when they've been removed. If there's any suspicion of disease outside the bowel at all, uh, or any great thickness, uh, uh, any uh, significant permeation into the thickness of the bowel, we give chemotherapy to reduce the risk of cells elsewhere in the body. And we have good, good reason to think that that works. That's 20 years of data that's been used there, more than that, 30 years. Um, but then the question is, if there is substantial disease or evidence of unresectable tumor uh, that they could not take out at the time of surgery, usually because the tumor is stuck to adjacent bowel or it might be oh. stuck to adjacent blood vessels. Um, that's when radiation is used to kill that area and proton therapy can be used for that. Because absolutely. it's so targeted. Because it's so targeted, absolutely, and we, we can do that. Okay, anything that I haven't asked about or that I've said like that's stupid that you need to clear up? <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> Don't be, you know, I, I'm a lay person, and you guys have a whole lot of you know, when, research when and experience. I wish somebody, somebody will win a Nobel Prize if they will come up with a good palatable prep for a, for a colonoscopy. That's now, the hard that's part. The, Nobel the colonoscopy, Prize, I mean, nice, most people you know, barely remember it. You know, they, yeah. they've, they've got you it's very relaxed prep. and happy. Yes. It's, 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 it's the, the prep, prep that's hard. And I will say, personally, I make my own broths. And so I kind of kind of got off sal solid food a little bit early. I, I worked my way into mm -hmm. it. Um, having the broth made me not starve to death. Yes. And, and it was not as bad as it's, that's the other thing. I don't think it's as bad as it's been built up to be. It's not. Um, and so it's getting over that emotional hurdle in your mind, I think, that people need to do. That's really the hard part. Yes, the, the prepping, it, it wasn't too bad. It's better, I think, um, than it used to be, too, actually. I, I think so. And I think what's just hard is um, just drinking a gallon of liquid. You know, who drinks? I don't drink as much water as I need to. Right, And right. drinking a gallon of liquid was just, that was the difficult part for me. But uh, the the colonoscopy itself, I actually got to see it on the screen. Oh, cool. So I was in Twilight, I guess that's what they call. And I got to see it on the screen. I wanted to see it. 
and I got to see my colon. A true researcher. I think right? I yeah. liked it. It was really, really <laughs> beautiful. You know, I, don't, I don't remember it very well. They, and that's one of the things they tell you is you A, have to have a driver, but B, have someone else there because you're not going to remember yes. yeah, what the I, doctor is saying at the time very I'm well. very curious. I have a natural curiosity, and oh, so, so I wanted fun. to see it on, on the TV screen. Well, you know, you're learning as you go. The rest of us just want the diagnosis, you know, just, just want the screening. Yes. All right, so we're going to recap. Colon cancer, much more prevalent in Hampton Roads, and some of that's genetics, and you can't do anything about your genes. Well, um, but you can be aware knowledge of is them. power. Right. Knowledge is power, so you don't wait until you're 50 years old. You tell your doctor. You tell your doctor if you have a family history. Mm -hmm. So knowing your family history and not being shy about talking to your doctor about it. Watch your diet, more fiber, less fat, exercise, anything else you can do. Get the screening. Get the, Get the screening. Started. Observe your stools. Observe changes in bowel habits. We That's hate talking important. about this. Yeah, I mean, sorry, you know, I'm trying to be very open, but it, yeah. for Americans, talking about this stuff is not a comfortable topic. Yeah. Well, we got to important. get past that, right? Yes, absolutely. Yep. Okay, you guys are helping me. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell it's still a little hard, but okay, so observe your stools, watch for changes, changes in your body, any type of changes. And Talk actually, there is a. Um, a line of science that's growing from what's going on in your bowels. So in the next couple of years, doctors are going to start looking more and more into your bowels because of what's ho happening in your gut. Yeah. What's happening in your gut is going to affect and that's a, a way lot to of find things. Out and that's a way of finding out in your gut. Farther inside. Absolutely. That makes sense. So there is this science that's emerging that is looking at the gut to determine your disease status, your health status, and so we have to get over we do. talking about this. And, and we do have to watch people, you know, you, your friend who was 35, I had a friend mm -hmm. who, who was in his 30s. Um, you don't expect it. Yeah. If you don't know the family history, you don't expect it. So you do have to watch for changes. You do have to check in with your doctor early and ask, what should I be screened for? Yeah. Ask your parents. What did, you know, yes. they, they used to call it the big C. Like cancer was cancer, it mm -hmm. didn't have different kinds. So I don't know what kind of cancer my grandfather had. So, you know, finding out that information really will help you know what your risks are. Absolutely. Okay, and you're gonna keep doing research, Lily. So am. next time, you know, you'll have an answer to all this, right? I, I hope so, I hope so, definitely. That's great, and if we need treatment, we will come see you. Thank you, Please do. Thank, thank you both so much. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for watching. I hope that even though this isn't the most comfortable topic in the world, we will learn to get comfortable with it so that we can reduce our risks. And if we do have colon cancer or any other kind of cancer, be aware and catch it early to increase um, our, our outcomes. Thank you for watching.